I'm Jason Bonham. I'm Travis Kress. Welcome to Wallace State Community College in Hansville, Alabama. Why do I specifically farm? It's just one of those things that kind of came natural to me. It's part of a family farm. Uh, it's just what I've seen grandfathers do, dad do. Uh, so it just kind of was something I grew up with and wanted to do myself. Well, as I was growing up, I thought I would never do anything like this. I had to work uh, in my mother's yard and everything had to be to a T all the time. If I missed weed eating with a single blade of grass, she'd make me go back there and, and uh, hit that one piece, even if it was a pair of scissors before supper. And so I thought, well, whenever I grow up, I'm never gonna do anything like this. So when I bought my first house, uh, I got to look around, I was like, the yard really needs some help. And so that's kind of got what my interest got started in it. And then I found out there was a program down here. So I started class down here and, and I'm still here. 20 years later. Here we teach uh, agribusiness classes and a whole lot of different things fall under that. And that can be anywhere from uh, turf management, landscape design, greenhouse management, greenhouse crop production. We've got a lot of a variety of classes that we teach here. In the greenhouses here at Wallace, we grow a variety of things, uh, a whole lot of flowers, annuals, some perennials. We do uh, some vegetables, including tomatoes and pepper plants like that, that you want to start indoors early. Uh, we do some tr tr uh, trees and shrubs. and uh, as you see in the background that we do some ferns and many different types of succulents. We have five acres here and we got a little over 20,000 square feet under cover. Right now we have a total of 16 students. Uh, most of it is students. We do have a couple lab assistants that work here with us in order to get a lot of this stuff done because that's a seven day a week job. It's not just a you know eight to three type thing. COVID has really affected us in the way that we teach classes. Uh, the past two years we had to do a lot of things through virtual and that's not always an easy thing to do when it's supposed to be more of a hands-on type thing. So we have to give them projects at home to, uh, to do, like uh, killing weeds using vinegar instead of actually here using another type of chemical. So it has been a pretty good bit of a challenge because we are a nonprofit organization. We actually sell here. We can't compete with any of our local people. So we actually sell here on campus in this particular greenhouse that we're in right now. We're kind of centrally located between uh, Birmingham and Huntsville, so we do get uh, a lot of our student clientele come from both areas from different directions, so uh, their friends and family will come down here and, and purchase from us as well. We have a couple of companies around here locally that we buy some things, and then other things come from uh, Park Seed up in North Carolina. Uh, we do a lot of stuff with our co-op system. So this is our classroom. This is the only classroom we have in the building. You can see we got it lined out here with uh, computers, and that's mainly for our landscape design class. A lot of the stuff we do is a lot of hands-on type stuff, and this week we've been teaching about different types of fertilizers. We do have a smart hub in the classroom that it's just like a big giant computer we can also use as a whiteboard, and it does a whole lot of different features. And then of course you can see we do a lot of our calculations and stuff on the board. This is one of our large lab areas. You can see in the background back here, we got a whole lot of equipment. We got different Kubotas, John Deere Gators, tractors, John Deere in case. Um, all kind of small, small engine equipment back here. And on either side of the room, we have flat filler machines. We use one of them that we use only for a nursery type mix. The other one is a greenhouse type mix. So this is where a lot of the happenings go on out here. All our transplanting, our seed starting, grafting, uh, even small engine classes happen out here. This is another one of our lab areas that we use. Uh, use it a lot for small engine class. We tear down engines. You see back here in the background, we got several engines and different things sitting back there. We take all those all the way down, completely down to the bare crankshaft and put them back together. Have to run when you start and have to run when you finish. That is a bit of a challenge. The reason why we teach that class because if you're anywhere in the agricultural or horticulture field, you're going to use some type of small engine, whether it be a blower, a weed eater, a mower, a tractor, whatever. So that kind of helps get the idea of how it works and then how, what you would need to do to maintain it and to fix it if there were some small repairs. So in this greenhouse right here, we're getting ready for our spring plant sale. So in here we got a whole bunch of our little seedlings. We started these seedlings over here on the mist line. And some of our cuttings and stuff are over here. And then as they spend 24 hours or so on the mist line, we'll take them off and put them over here on the benches here in the greenhouse and then grow them off from there. This is a bunch of stuff that's been done just in the past couple of weeks. Go on to the next greenhouse.
Yeah, so this is our number one greenhouse. We actually re-nicknamed it the Fern House, and you can see why, because we got so many ferns in here. We got all different varieties of plants in this greenhouse. We use a lot of this stuff for plant ID. And the ferns we use on campus, we use these for graduation and different events that we have on campus, kind of decorate the stage or just bring a little bit more of a homey feel to a room. And as you walk through, you can see all types of flowers. We got different orchids, uh, New Guinea impatiens. We got plants over here on the other side that we use for uh, floriculture class. We actually do make flower arrangements. So here we do have six different types of greenhouses, or not six different types. We got six greenhouses, two different types. We got two that are gutter connected, and then other just regular Quonset house. One of them is a Gothic arch type house, and it's super tall. Uh, some of these other ones they were bought in the, the early '70s when this program first started here at Wallace State, and so we just carried them on and kept up with them. This is one of our smaller greenhouses that we actually use just for a shade house. We just use one layer of plastic over it. Just kind of hold plants over for the winter. And so they just sit in here that keeps them from going completely dormant. This is some of our stock plants. Over here we have a sales area or sales pad that we call it. And we have a, a sample of everything that we have in the nursery out here as far as deciduous and evergreen trees and shrubs. Here at Wallace we have three different high tunnels. Uh, got them all lined up right in a row right here. This first one we use for our floriculture class. We actually only grow cut flowers in. Uh, right now we have some snapdragons left over from last season. We just left them in here to see how they do in the cold weather. And all this is the cover crop that we planted just to help for soil building and content. So we're in the high tunnel that we use here at Wallace State with uh, the pest exclusion netting from Dr. A's project. I'm um, standing here beside the uh, traps he uses for fall army worms. Cabbage loopers, there's several other. Eric Shavey comes up and checks these uh, every two weeks to every month. Last year the traps came in really handy. I know that uh, we were mainly looking at the egress of insects and the progression of insects in and out of the high tunnel to see where it was, but when we seen the fall armyworm flight, because we had these traps and Eric coming here, we were kind of able to, to predict when the fall armyworms were coming and we were able to do sprays and kind of protect our crops. So, we have each trap set up. Eric puts a different pheromone in each one to attract the insects uh, to do the flights of the insects and then he reports back to Dr. A and then that's usually, I think he publishes it in the IPM newsletter uh, so we can kind of see when stuff's coming and know when to make management decisions. So this is uh, outside of the high tunnel where we have Dr. A's pest exclusion netting. Uh, we've had real good benefits and luck out of keeping insects out, especially some of our larger ones. Uh, we've noticed that through the trapping and things like that. Uh, when it comes to a high tunnel, I don't think I would have one now without uh, the pest exclusion or doing some kind of exclusion netting. We also have three nursery houses here at Wallace. As you can see back behind me, we got all different types of shrubs and things that we do in here. And all this is student grown. We start from cuttings or seeds and grow it all the way up to a sellable product. This particular house right here, we only left the shade cloth on it, where the other ones we try to overwinter just a little. We use extension resources probably once a week or more. Extension resources are invaluable. Uh, to be able to do, you know, common nowadays do a quick Google search uh, to get information, but you don't know if the information is correct, is it research based, uh, but you can go into the extension website, look through their publications and get knowledge that's research based uh, that you know you can trust that'll benefit you. Yeah, publications, conferences, um, even individual visits, people coming by and, and helping us out in different ways. I use the Beginning Farmer app. Uh, it's a great way, it's, you know, instead of having to look up agents' phone numbers or anything, they're all in there. Uh, to use the ID tools that are in there, uh, that's the one I rely on, and any kind of publications, the uh, IPM newsletter. Uh, any student that comes through my program, I make sure they sign up for that IPM newsletter because that's the best way of getting continuing education. You can see what's coming to make decisions. We're constantly contacting them about different things and offering them a place as a, a venue to host different workshops and uh, we attend those and they attend some that we have. Know as much knowledge up front before you go into it. Uh, some have the idea they can just learn as they go. Uh, do your study, do your research, come to Wallace, take classes, attend the uh, extension programs, just any kind 
of education you can get to have prior knowledge to flatten that learning curve. Learning curves now can be more expensive and get you further behind uh, to be a good sustainable farm to move forward. You have gotta know to make the right decisions to protect the bottom dollar. Don't go into debt, only do what you can do. If you wanna start out with a greenhouse and build you a small greenhouse first, obviously get the best equipment you can possibly, possibly afford, but don't go broke and don't go into debt doing it.